everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV. I'm your host, Amanda Aliberti. Today, we want to really focus on open adoption and the idea that it's not just one moment in time. Open adoption can gradually grow where both parties are able to trust one another and build off of that and ultimately have direct contact with one another. Today, we are super excited to welcome two members of the adoption triad, or rather three members of the adoption triad. We have Amy, who's a birth mom who placed her daughter for adoption through our agency back in 2016. And we have Shelly and Doug to discuss what it has been like parenting little Macy. So welcome guys. So Amy, why don't you first start by sharing a little bit about when you first came in contact with Adoptions from the Heart and what that experience was like? Well, it was, I was extremely nervous. I was extremely scared. I oh, was extremely lost. <laughs> um, it was a bad time in my life and I found out I was pregnant and I shouldn't have been and I was going down a path I didn't want to go down and I had no idea what to do or how to move forward. And so I reached out to Adoption from the Heart and uh, the rest of the story just kind of writes itself. When you initially came to the agency, what had you been aware of in terms of open adoption? Like, had you known what that would look like? What had been your knowledge about adoption at that point? Um, I really didn't have any knowledge about it at all. Um, I had a high hopes, <laughs> but I had no idea. And did the social worker that you work with, I believe it was Stephanie? Yeah. Did she kind of talk through with you what your options could look like in terms of openness? She did. Um, she explained everything in detail. She was just amazing. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without her, honestly. That's great to hear. And what were you looking for in terms of a relationship with this family who you had obviously never met yet? Um, what were you expecting out of that relationship? I was, well, hoping for the most, hoping for as much as I could get. <laughs> um, but in a way I tried not to set myself up for failure. I tried not to think what could happen, what might not happen. <laughs> Yeah. So, what, what were you most scared of in terms of choosing adoption and, and finding this family who was going to have an open relationship with you? Losing her. Sure. And I'm assuming you were presented with some profiles of families. What made you choose this amazing family of Shelly and Doug? Oh, that's super simple. <laughs> um, I was presented with like six, seven really thick binders. Like these binders were huge. <laughs> and I went through each and every one of those pages. I was flipping super fast. I didn't like any of them. I wasn't comfortable with the idea. Um, and their page just stuck out to me. And they were the first family that I even reached out to. They were the first family that I allowed stuff to even consider <laughs> reaching out to. And it was just, I don't know, I just felt it. I just knew that that was the one. I'd like to welcome Shelly and Doug to the conversation. I'm hoping that you guys can share a little bit about what was your expectation when you first came to Adoptions from the Heart in terms of open adoption and what did you envision of what that relationship would look like with a future birth parent? Well, I think we had high hopes and you know, you expect for the best and you want the most for everybody involved. And we just, we can't say it enough. It just got higher and higher and higher and expanded. And it's like we're in this fantasy novel and chapter three, and there's just a hundred more chapters to come. It, it's just been a totally magical experience beyond anything we could have ever, ever imagined. And how about for you, Doug? What did you initially think of in terms of like contact with a birth parent, visits, um, you know, having that direct relationship. What, what did you envision when you thought about open adoption? Well, I was very open-minded about it and was thinking, you know, first, first and foremost, you know, about the child and Amy, but I, I thought too, I, I sort of knew from the get-go that, that we would like Amy <laughs> and learn to love her, which we do. <laughs> So it was really just uh, sort of meant to be 
and we were sort of told that's the way this was going to go and it did like mm -hmm. if you're patient so sort of like what what amy said you you go into it with an open mind and you don't have real strong expectations one way or another and it it just um it just developed and went the way it was supposed to, to go so sure well and it's interesting because i think that most folks when they come into this program whether you are a prospective birth parent or a prospective adoptive parent you have this initial idea of okay open adoption seems like the right way to go um, we want to have that contact we know it's in the best interest of the child but i'm a little cautious what is this going to look like right mm -hmm. how are we going to be able to build this relationship with somebody that i don't even know so it sounds like from what I'm hearing from all of you, when you guys initially met, you really clicked. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we met at a Red Robin. We met at a Red Robin and Amy was, you know, about six or eight weeks away from delivering maybe. And I still remember, you can just remember that like it was yesterday, everything we said and we did. And then, you know, getting to go to the appointments from, you know, from that point on, there was just a magic. And I know how we felt when we got in the car, when we left there, we're like, this is it. Like, this is going to happen. And we just, we fell in love with her. We just absolutely fell in love with Amy. Sure. And Amy, on your side of things, after you initially met Shelly and Doug, how did that help you? as you were moving forward in the process and ultimately when you delivered Macy and went through that hospital experience and the actual placement, like what did that mean for you knowing who Doug and Shelly are? <laughs> I have chills right now because everything Shelly said was like dead on. Um, when I left <laughs> Red Robin, it was like, I just knew that this was the perfect, the perfect spot I needed to be in. <laughs> that eased everything. Um, all of those feelings of anxiety, um, it just, it really helps get me past all of that, you know, just being scared. <laughs> and then we just took one step at a time. Well, and oftentimes birth parents will talk about having that pre-placement meeting really put their, their hearts at ease, knowing mm -hmm. like, I know who these people are. I know where my child is going. And it makes you feel a little more comfortable yeah. going through the process. Had you guys initially agreed upon like a certain amount of openness, like a number of visits per year or how you were going to exchange pictures? What was the initial agreement that you had? We just kind of, we knew, I think there's like a required two times a year, but I yeah. think we knew it was going to be more than that. We just, we knew and which it obviously has developed into much more than that. So what does life look like for you guys today? I know Macy is six years old. Talk to me about what your relationship with each other looks like today. We see each other, COVID put a little twist in things, so we got creative, but um, I, at one point at Christmas of COVID, we met in a parking lot, just the three adults with no kids and exchange gifts because we weren't sure with COVID. But, you know, pre-COVID, it was um, texting, um, fa FaceTime, phone calls and things that aren't planned. It might be a text from Amy in the morning, like have a great day or a picture we'll send her of Macy, just anything. It's just an incredible relationship. It's almost like a sister bond and it is a sister bond. And um, it's just things that aren't planned and, and packages that come in the mail and surprises. And I mean, we could go on and on, right, Amy? It's just birthdays and holidays and, you know, Amy has a big extended family. We have a big extended family, but together we're just this big extended family. So we, though we're busy in all of our lives, we just, we continue to make time for each other and we put the child at the center of it all. When you first found out that you were facing an unplanned pregnancy, did you ever envision you would get to this point? Like, did you ever think it would look like this today? No, I thought this could only be a fairy tale. So it sounds like you guys have really been able to work on your relationship and and, and form this bond, um, ultimately, which is in the best interest of Macy. Doug, I'm curious, like, what advice would you give to a prospective adoptive parent who sees this, they're like, wow, this is great. We want a birth mom like Amy. Like, how do we get to that point of being so connected like what do you think helped drive that that relationship building that way what worked for you guys 
I think going into it, and I touched on this earlier, was trying to let go of any expectations you have and let go of the nervousness. Although it's hard because I was nervous, like I said, before I met Amy and and then that does go away and you don't know what it's gonna look like. So there's, you know, there's that unknown, but then you, you have to kind of let it happen and, and be open to it. And it, and it really can, and, and, and it's so comfortable you know, being with Amy and then, you know, one of the, one of the most rewarding things for me was not too long ago, you know, as we, we see Amy a lot is when Macy kind of starts like looking at Amy, like, I really like her. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a couple of years ago, like, wow, there's like that, that connection. And to see our daughter be able to have that. And then to mm -hmm. see Amy to have that, that's what this is all about. That's, what you can hope for and that does it, it can happen you know and i does it does happen a lot so we're fortunate that it happens and, and we have more than that and uh like i said if you can just be open you know and it will come you know it, it will sure. amy what does that mean to you to have your daughter know who you are <laughs> everything it's so awesome. I had asked them to be at every doctor appointment and I had asked them to be there for the labor because I wanted to be around them as much as possible. Like if I could have lived in with them for the month before having her, I probably would have. Like I wanted to know as much about them as possible because that was me letting my walls down. I wanted to experience everything I could to give my full trust. And it just, it just happened. <laughs> It sounds like you guys were able to build trust with one another, which is an interesting layer to what we're talking about. Because it's really yeah. hard when you're initially coming into this process and thinking about creating this open relationship if you don't even know the person. So the idea of really working on that trust and understanding mm -hmm. that you have to be vulnerable, right? You have to let down those walls and really open up so that you can start building this connection yeah. to the other side. It sounds like you all did. <laughs> well, and what I'm hearing from you guys is that open adoption is not necessarily always this structured two visits a year, sending pictures and letters. Mm -hmm. Like you guys all seem to have let down your guard and, and you were very open, like Doug said, you were flexible, you were open-minded, you were patient with that processing of things. And your relationship has grown over time where you don't even necessarily go through adoptions from the heart anymore, right? You speak directly right. to each other yeah. right. and have that, that real organic, naturally mm -hmm. created relationship. That's great. Well, and that's something we're really trying to spread awareness about because people assume that when you, you know, have a placement and child is um, placed with a family, then this is what we agree upon and that's all it's going to be. But you really do have to be open-minded to the growth of open adoption and things might change over time um, and they might grow into something more. You just have to be open-minded to it. Yeah, and at this point, Macy was actually able to meet Amy's grandparents. So we've been able to have just some really special things, you know, for Macy just to, to learn about her past and, you know, her connections. And what something really important that I wanted to mention was Macy never had a day where we said, you're adopted. It just is. And we have pictures up through the house everywhere, you know, cards are saved. And Doug um, has was married before and his wife passed away from cancer. So he has two older boys. So we have a true blended, extended, blended, extended family that just is amazing and it's, there's no threat and I, I found um and i know amy runs into this too you get asked so many questions about adoption and we've gotten really good at answering adoption questions um but i think the biggest thing is there's just no threat and i think some people have a hard time wrapping their brain around open adoption and i think when you can say it's if you put the child at the center and and not us 
but you truly put that child at the core center, it's about having everybody to love, whoever they are, related, not related, live in your house, not live in your house. And I think that's the, you know, the meat of it all. When that child's at the center, you can let your guard down. You're not threatened by anything. And when love takes over, that's what it's about. And we have truly found that. Number two, that going into it, that you both wanted it. You as, as a, uh, you know, an adoptive parent and mm -hmm. the birth parents both chose this open adoption. So that, that helps moving forward, you know, to, to ease, ease your mind and let your guard down. Listen, we have these talks all the time. But as I'm listening to you all speak, I actually was visually thinking about the adoption triad, Shelly, that you just mentioned. And mm -hmm. everything you guys keep discussing goes back to Macy. So, hello, mm -hmm. Macy. Welcome to the <laughs> course. <laughs> Hi, Macy. <Hello. laughs> but but it truly reflects your your passion and dedication to Macy, all three of you that the focus is on her and what's in the best interest of her, nobody else but Macy, and all the love that you're giving and the, the, the work that you've put into developing this open adoption is ultimately for her, which is great. My final question to each of you, is there anything that you wanna share with our community so that they will know something better about open adoption? Like, is there anything that you wish you would have known back then that you know now that you can help offer to our adoption community? Man, that's tough. I mean, it's, this community is amazing. Like you just, you have to put your trust in it. I'm thankful to be where I am and I'm thankful to have found it and I am so thankful that I made that original call. For you Shelly and Doug, anything that you want people to know about your experience or something that people always ask you that seems surprised by? Uh, one thing that I can add is that you don't know, you can think, but you don't know mm -hmm. how much love that you're going to first of all be able to give, but then receive, you know, and not just from Macy. But, you know, and with Amy, you know, it's just amazing. Like you, you, we were told, you know, that it will be right for you and, you know, to be patient, you know, you're, you're thinking, how's it going to be? And then, wow, it's, it's just amazing. You can't imagine that it would be that great. You hope for it. And, and it is, I mean, we've, we've heard every possible question and Marilyn was our social worker. And she had us well prepped for it. And we followed her advice, be patient, go on vacation. And what's supposed to happen will, it's life changing. I couldn't have said it better than that. <laughs> well, thank you to Amy, to Doug, to Shelly. We really appreciate you guys sharing your story. And we know that this will help impact the community to learn more about open adoption. Um, it's truly remarkable to actually see an adoption triad on the screen right now. Right? You have a birth mom, you have an adoptive family, you have a child, and you guys have such a beautiful relationship. I know a lot of families out there hope to have what you guys have, and we really appreciate you giving us the ins and outs of what, of what life is like for you today. Um, I'm happy to hear that you guys receive the supportive services from Adoptions from the Heart. Sounds like you maintain great relationships with both Stephanie and Marilyn out of our uh, Pennsylvania office. So that makes me happy to hear that um, you're, you're able to have that foundation moving forward. So thank you guys so much. We're hopeful that this helped uh, spread some more knowledge about open adoption. Remember, it's not one moment in time. It is a gradual growth and it can lead to something really beautiful.